Hello, welcome to my channel. Today we'll learn how to control a servo motor with an STM32 using STM32 Cube IDE. Before we start, we'll cover the basics of how servos work and what PWM is. Let's get started. First, let's talk about PWM. PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation. It is a digital waveform where the width of each pulse varies while the period remains constant. By adjusting the pulse width, or duty cycle, the signal can simulate different analog levels, allowing precise control of power to devices like motors or LEDs. The duty cycle determines how long the signal stays on during each cycle, influencing the average voltage and the amount of power delivered. On the screen, you can see how a PWM signal looks. The duty cycle is usually calculated as a percentage. For example, if we have a period of 10 millisecond and a duty of 4 millisecond, the duty cycle is 40%. This allows us to easily calculate the average output voltage. For instance, with a 5 volt supply, the PWM output would be 40% of 5 volt, which equals 2 volt. Additionally, we can calculate the frequency from the period using the formula 1 divided by the period, which gives us the frequency in hertz. A servo motor is used for precise control of angular position. It operates by receiving a PWM signal that dictates its position. The signal typically has a frequency of 50 hertz, meaning the PWM period is 20 millisecond, with the pulse width determining the angle of the servo's shaft. Servo's pinout is mostly like this, one pin for ground, one for VCC, and one for PWM signal. To generate a PWM signal using an MCU, it's essential to understand how timers work. Timers in microcontrollers count from a minimal value bottom to a defined maximum value top, or vice versa. Timer key parameters are count frequency and count top value. The timer count value correlates with PWM as follows. The duty cycle is defined by the compare register value, CCR, while the period is defined by the top value register, ARR, and the prescalar register value, PSC, which divides the system clock. To calculate the duty cycle as a percentage, use the formula. CCR value divided by ARR value. This formula is necessary for setting an exact PWM frequency. Now we can move on to STM32 cube ID. First, we need to select the timer channel and enable PWM generation mode for this channel, as well as enable the internal clock source. Next, let's adjust the clock configurations by selecting the PLL clock instead of HSI. The PLL clock is more efficient for these operations and allows a broader range of frequency adjustments. To achieve 50 Hz, configure the ARR and PSC values in the timer settings. To calculate these values, first divide 64 MHz by 50 Hz to get the base value. Then divide this result by the desired ARR value. Adjust the values to find ones that are round and ensure an exact 50 Hz output. Now save the configurations and generate the code. Next, we need HAL PWM functions, so let's check the HAL documentation.
There's a HAL TIM PWM start function that we need to use to enable the pin for PWM generation. Write it with the arguments, the timer pointer, and the channel. Now, to change the PWM duty cycle, we need to adjust the compare value using the HAL TIM set compare function with the arguments timer pointer, channel, and value. Create variable for compare value. Write code to rotate the servo from one end to the other and back. To manage direction, we'll use flag values, so I'm including the stdbool.h library to create a bool type variable named direction. The specific timing for the servo depends on the model, but a common range is 0.6 to 2.4 milliseconds, which works for most servos, but may reduce the total rotation angle. Let's calculate the relevant values for the timer. This is a minimum value. Let's write if else statement which sets direction variable to zero, if PWM val is under minimum value. And sets to one, if PWM val exceeds max value. Let's calculate max value. Now, increment and decrement value accordingly. If direction is zero, increment, and if one, decrement. Save. Enable hex and bin files generation if you are using separate STM32 programmer software. Build. Connect ST Link Programmer and upload. Let's take one servo and three mail to mail wire. Connect. Connect servo minus to MCU GND. Connect servo PWM pin to selected A0 pin. Now add one mail-to-mail -mail wire to minus.
Connect the power supply's negative wire to both the MCU's and the servo's ground. Connect the power supply's positive to the servo's VCC pin. It works well. Now let's add the potentiometer. To do this, we should configure the IOC file. Enable the ADC channel as shown in the video. Save and generate code. I added the read ADC and map functions. This is the read ADC function. This is a map function. Delete these if else statements. First, read the ADC value from the desired channel. After that, use the map function to convert ADC values to PWM values. Save and build the project. Add two wires to connect the potentiometer to VCC and GND. Add a wire to connect the potentiometer to the ADC input channel. Connect the potentiometer. It works. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more. Feel free to drop a comment if you have any questions or suggestions. See you next time.